Welcome to Lincoln Park Zoo. We are so happy to have you with us. Today on Stay Tuned to the Zoo, we are gonna slow things down a little bit and talk about slow moving animals. Many people might think that moving slow for an animal can be a disadvantage. However, there are many benefits to having slow moving adaptations. And today we're gonna learn about just that. We're gonna focus on a couple different slow moving species that are home to the Regenstein Small Mammal Reptile House here at Lincoln Park Zoo. Before we introduce you to those species though, I want you to think in your head of the first animal that comes to mind when you think of a slow moving animal. Did anyone say sloth? If so, you were spot on. Sloths are one of the slowest moving mammals. They move so slow that algae can actually grow on their fur. This gives them a greenish tint and it actually helps them camouflage or blend into the tree canopies that they call home. Here at Lincoln Park Zoo, we are home to one of the six sloth species and that's the Hoffman's two-toed sloth. These sloths are named for the two claws on their front feet. Here at the Regenstein Small Mammal and Reptile House, there are three sloths that call the habitat behind me home. Hoffman's two-toed sloths are going to be native to Central and South America, and they're an arboreal species. Arboreal simply means living their lives in the tree canopies. So those really long hooked claws and a really powerful grip are gonna help them stay safe and hold onto the branches and vines in their tree canopy home. In the wild, Hoffman's two-toed sloth will find their diet up in the tree canopy as well. They'll look for leaves, fruits, flowers, and even tree sap. Here at Lincoln Park Zoo, for these zoo-born individuals, we wanna make sure they're getting those same greens as part of their diet. So our zookeepers will place their vet-approved diet in baskets hanging around the tree canopy in their habitat. In there is starch, a leaf-eater chow, produce like greens, and even fruit. They're able to get their food whenever they are active. Now for a sloth, that is usually at night. They're a nocturnal species. During the day, sloths are gonna be sleeping and they're gonna be sleeping a lot. You and I might sleep for seven to eight hours at night, but not for a sloth. They're gonna sleep about 15 to 20 hours a day. And when they are active, let's be honest, they're not that active. They are still moving really slowly or laying motionless. Now for many of you, you might think, why would an animal want to move this slow? And for a sloth, moving slow is really gonna help them conserve or save their body energy. This is also important for a sloth because they're not gonna be out searching for food super quickly like other animals. So saving that body energy is a really great way to stay safe in the tree canopy. Sloths are well adapted for their tree lifestyle, but down on the ground, they don't move super well. Don't worry though, sloths only come down to the ground once a week to use the bathroom. So their slow metabolism and slow movement are gonna help this unique species stay really safe in the treetops. Another famous slow moving animal are tortoises. Here at Lincoln Park Zoo, we are home to four red footed tortoises. In the Regenstein Small Mammal and Reptile House, they share a space, a CND space altogether. A lot of people ask questions about what is the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? Well, for our chat today, both are pretty slow moving. The biggest difference is tortoises usually spend most of their lives on land and usually have a nice high domed shell. Turtles usually spend lives near or in the water and have a really flat shell for moving quickly through the water. Although with nature, there's always exceptions. Now back to the red-footed tortoises. They are named for the beautiful reddish coloration on their neck and on their legs. They are a medium-sized tortoise and can weigh about 20 pounds and are about 11 to 13 inches long. That's about as long as a ruler. And they're gonna inhabit dry and wet forested areas as well as sandy areas. Here at Lincoln Park Zoo, the four tortoises share a nice sandy habitat with lots of features to encourage their natural behaviors. Tortoises are usually an herbivore species, which means plant eaters. However, sometimes they'll eat insects and other small invertebrates. Here at Lincoln Park Zoo, they get a vet approved daily diet of produce like lettuce, fruits, and vegetables all over their habitat to encourage that natural behavior of looking and searching for their food. 
Just like other slow moving animals though, the tortoises don't scarf down their food like you and I might. They definitely take their sweet time. When you do get the chance to see a tortoise eat, my favorite thing to watch is their beak. They don't have teeth like you or I do. They have a hardened beak and they use that to crush into the fruits and vegetables that are part of their Vetaproof daily diet. All reptiles share a couple key things in common. Most of them lay eggs, they have a body covered in scales or scoots, and they're ectothermic. Ectothermic is also referred to as cold-blooded. All that means is these animals cannot maintain their body temperature. They rely on outside heat sources like the sun or hot rocks. We make sure to have that in their habitat. That way they have lots of heat sources to maintain their body temperature. I'll let you in on a little secret too. The red-footed tortoises here at the zoo also go on field trips to an outdoor habitat. Our keepers will take them outside. That way they're able to explore outdoors in a new and novel environment and get some sunshine as well. Now for a tortoise, moving slow might seem like a disadvantage, but don't worry, turtles and tortoises have a built-in protection. Have you guessed it? It's their shell. Tortoises have a nice high domed shell like I mentioned, and they have a flat bottom. These shells are made of bone and actually attached to their backbone. On top of their shell are scales or scoots, and these are made of keratin, which is another tough feature, and also a feature that you and I share with reptiles because our nails are made of keratin as well. These tough scales and the tough shell are gonna help protect turtles and tortoises from anything that might come their way. This paired with moving slow are gonna keep them nice and safe in their tropical home. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the sloths and tortoises that call our zoo home and how for some animals moving slow is a big benefit. Thank you so much for joining us for our chat here today. We hope you enjoyed learning all about slow and unhurried animals. Whenever I feel busy or rushed, I like to take some time, relax, and practice yoga. I hope you'll try a few moves with me today. First, you're gonna to wanna to find a safe, comfortable place to move and stretch. I'm using a yoga mat, but a blanket works just as well. Our very first move is one of my most favorite unhurried animals, the sloth. Sloths are masters at moving slowly, even when going up and down the trees. We're gonna pretend that we're a sloth holding onto a tree and enjoying a rest. Start by planting one foot on the ground. My right leg is stronger, so I'm gonna start with this one. You'll wrap your other leg around that leg as best you can. Stick your arms out straight in front of you, cross them over, grasp them, and bring them back towards your chest. Remember, whatever is most comfortable for you. We're going to hold this position for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and release. And for the best practice, if you're up for a challenge, go ahead and do the other leg as well. Next, we're gonna move on to an animal that most of us think about when we think of slow moving animals, turtles and tortoises. Turtles and tortoises have strong, thick shells covering their backs, so there's no need for them to be speedy. For this one, we're gonna move down to the ground. You're going to kneel and rest your bottom on your feet. You'll reach your arms straight up to the sky, and then we're gonna bend forward at the waist. Go ahead and follow me. Feel free to rest your head on the mat if you can, or just hold it up. While you're stretching, reach back and feel your backbone. Turtles and tortoises have shells connected to their backbones. It's all part of their body. That's pretty cool. Go ahead and hold for a few more seconds. And then release. Great job. The next one is the sea star. We often forget that they're even animals because they move so infrequently. But slow animals can live in the water too. You're gonna stand up for this one. And stretch out your legs so that they are shoulder width apart. Give yourself a nice firm plant in the ground. Arms straight out at your side so you look exactly like a sea star. And for a count of 10, we're gonna reach our arms up to the ceiling and back down to our sides. Really feel that stretch in your arms. 
Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go ahead and relax. Ooh, that was a good one. And our very last move today is one that might surprise you. We're gonna sit down on the ground and put our feet together. Can you guess which animal we're going to be? Hopefully you said a butterfly. Even though their wings can move fast, butterflies often float from flower to flower enjoying the scenery. Monarch butterflies actually travel south every winter to get to warmer weather. And they can travel up to 3,000 miles in just one year. All that travel means there's a lot of room for stopping, resting, and relaxing. So let's pretend we're a butterfly relaxing on the breeze. Place your hands on your knees and gently bounce for a count of 10. Remember, it feels good to stretch, but don't do anything that hurts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Great job. Sloths, turtles, tortoises, sea stars, butterflies, those are some of our most favorite unhurried animals. What are some other slow moving animals that you can think of? And what yoga poses would you do for those animals? Let us know in the comments. We're so glad you joined us for Stay Tuned to the Zoo. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday.